Hi, Big Tractor Power fans. In this video, we're going to spend some time out on a Western Kentucky winter wheat field and see it harvested with Shelburne Reynolds stripper heads on Case IH axle flow combines. Following the harvest, we'll see tractors come through the field and plant a second crop of soybeans into the tall straw left by the stripper head. Then we'll see the soybeans growing and follow them all the way through harvest in the fall with those same Case IH axle flow combines. I featured two different videos on the channel during the 2019 winter wheat harvest showing these Shelburne stripper heads in action and there was a lot of questions that came up from viewers about them that I'll try to answer in this video as we follow the cropping season. So I hope that you'll enjoy learning more about the Shelburne stripper head and double crop soybeans but first let's head out to the field so that you can see and hear this farm machinery in action. Shelburne Reynolds is based in Suffolk, England, and first began developing the stripper head in 1987 and released it into the European market in 1989. The first Shelburne Reynolds stripper head sold in North America was delivered in Kentucky in 1990 and became a popular option in this region because of its ability to harvest just the winter wheat grain and leave the rest of the straw standing in the field, which is perfect for the double crop soybeans planted in this part of the country. The Shelburne Reynolds stripper head threshes 85% of the grain right in the header. It uses eight rows of fingers to comb through the field, just raking out the grain in the head of the wheat and pulling that into the auger pan of the header and then feeding that through the combine. Very little material is actually threshed by the combine. What you see coming out the back is mostly just the husks around the grain of wheat that are threshed out by the combine with the rest of the straw left standing in the field as the harvest progresses. Even though it looks like a vacuum cleaner has gone through the field sucking up all the grain, it is actually a mechanical system inside that header, as I just described, that allows it to collect the wheat. This machine is capable of harvesting a variety of small grains, including oats, barley, warm season grasses, and field peas. Also, it does an excellent job in down wheat, as we can see this model 9230 and 8230 axle flow combine crossing the field. This wheat was rained on with several inches of water, as well as heavy winds that matted it down. These headers do a great job in lifting the wheat, pulling the grain in, and leaving the rest of the straw on the field. Shelburne Reynolds offers a variety of different stripper heads from 14 feet all the way up to 42 feet. In this video, we're seeing 32 foot models working on these Case IH axle flow combines. The stripper head produces an extremely clean, 
quality sample of small grains when it's harvesting because very little material other than the grain ever enters the combine. In fact, these headers improve the capacity of the combine by 30% during harvest. These combines are leaving tall straw as they go across the field, which is exactly what the farm wants in western Kentucky because a second crop of soybeans will be no-tilled in to the straw and leaving it tall helps hold moisture in the ground to help the new plants grow over the hot summer and it also shades out weeds until the new plants canopy over the top of the standing straw. Another key advantage of running a Shelburne Reynolds stripper head is being able to harvest earlier in the season, as early as two extra weeks, which is crucial when you're planting those double crop soybeans and trying to maximize the yield of that second crop in the field. You can also harvest earlier in the morning and much later at night. Even when there's a little bit of dew on the stem of the plant, if the head is dry, you can roll on through the evening with your headlights and keep on harvesting that wheat and putting it in the bin and clearing off the field so the no-till planter can come through and put the beans in the ground. It's always neat seeing big farm machines working at night and this farm is able to run pretty late in the evening using the Shelburne stripper heads because even if there's a little bit of moisture on the stem of the plant, they're only needing to harvest the grain, which is still dry. And that is crucial in getting the crop off the field so they can start planting the second crop of soybeans. Now we're out in the same field the next day and the farm is using their John Deere 9460R four-wheel drive tractor in 50 foot wide John Deere 1890 air drill to seed the soybeans directly into the ground. This is a no-till method and the drill is able to place the seeds in the soil while not really disturbing the straw and leaving it standing which will hold that moisture to help the new plants begin to grow.
Another option besides using an air drill to no-till the soybeans into the standing wheat straw is using a planter. Here we can see another Western Kentucky farm using their John Deere 1795 planters to no-till the soybeans under the wheat straw. This farm uses the 40-foot wide machines to plant 16 rows of 30-inch corn in the spring, and now they're planting 31 rows of 15-inch spaced soybeans. Once the wheat has been harvested by the Shelburne Reynolds stripper heads and the soybeans have been no-tilled under the wheat straw, farms in western Kentucky will apply herbicide on the field to prevent summer grasses, crabgrass, and broadleaf weeds from choking out the newly emerging soybeans. Here we can see a John Deere R4030 spraying across the field following those 1795 planters. Let's take a moment to see and hear this big machine at work. Here is a Western Kentucky wheat field about three weeks after being harvested with the Shelburne Reynolds stripper heads. We can see the soybeans are quickly beginning to emerge and canopying over the top of the standing straw. Summer rain has begun to decay the straw and it's quickly beginning to fall below the plants. It will continue to serve as a mulch holding moisture over the summer, which is crucial because temperatures will often rise above 100 degrees for several days in western Kentucky and having that extra moisture ensures the best yields in the fall. In mid-October, it's time to harvest those double crop soybeans, and I've returned to the same field where we saw the Case IH. 9230 axle flow and 8230 axle flow that were harvesting the wheat with Shelburne stripper heads that stripped the grain out of the wheat plant while leaving the stem and basically what would be the straw standing. Well, double crop beans were seeded in. As you can see, the soybeans have come up very nicely here in this field. And we can see that the stems of the wheat are still intact, but summer rains have weakened and dissipated them. We can see that they're, they're pretty brittle now. And now in the fall, the farm's new Case IH 9240 axle flow combine is out here in the field harvesting. You can see it simply comes through and with a McDon draper head and cuts the beans and harvests them and also 
cuts right through that straw and chops it up and distributes it back out on the field. As you can see, the Case IH 9240 axle flow and 40 foot wide McDon draper head do an excellent job in harvesting the soybeans as well as cutting that standing wheat straw that was left over, spreading it back out on the field, again serving as a mulch, adding nutrients back into the soil for next year's corn crop. The one thing that a shellborn stripper head cannot harvest is soybeans, so the farm does have to invest in the draper head to cut that second crop in the fall. But overall, a great investment because you're getting two crops off of one field in one year, and that is a big boost to a farm's income. I hope you've enjoyed hearing and seeing all this big machinery at work, as well as learning about how the Shelbourne Stripperhead harvests wheat and helps Western Kentucky farmers prepare the fields for a second crop of soybeans. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, consider subscribing to Big Tractor Power YouTube, where there are over 1,000 videos of farm machines in action. If you have any questions or thoughts about the video, please leave them in the comment section below, as I try to respond to every post that is made. If you would like to get a preview of what is coming up next on Big Tractor Power YouTube, make sure to check out Big Tractor Power Instagram, where I share pictures and short video clips of what is currently being filmed in the field. As always, thank you for watching.